Will transferring a house impact your eligibility for Medicaid? Here to answer this pressing question is Harry S. Margolis, the founder of ElderLawAnswers.com, who practices elder law, estate, and special needs planning at Margolis, Bloom, and Diagostino. Harry, welcome. Glad to be here, Jake. So, firstly, does transferring a house to a descendant affect Medicaid eligibility? It almost always does. Um, so Medicaid, uh, which, pay, which is kind of the poverty program for health care, health insurance, um, uh, basically wants you to be poor. So wants you not to have assets, for the most part, to qualify, though you are allowed to keep your house. And, uh, but a lot of people still transfer the house out or want to protect the house because um, I often say that Medicaid doesn't get you coming, it gets you going mm -hmm. because it has a program called estate recovery. So if you've been a Medicaid recipient during your life and you die and you own your house, the state's going to try to recoup its, ex its expenses uh, upon your death from that house. And uh, so that's, that's Medicaid estate recovery. So people often transfer houses out of their own names, either outright to family members or into trust or sometimes use something called a life estate in order to avoid that estate recovery claim uh, upon their death. But then Medicaid doesn't want you to do that either. So in most cases, it, it imposes a transfer penalty for uh, transfers of any assets, but especially the house. Um, and, it, and it's a somewhat complicated formula. But the basic rule is if you transfer your house, you can't get Medicaid coverage for the following five years, the subsequent five years. So it's a five-year look-back period or waiting period after a transfer, and then once the five years has passed, um, you you could you can then get Medicaid. So that's that's the basic rule. But uh, there are a number of exceptions, and I don't know if you're ready for me to get into those. Before getting into the exceptions, though, I'm curious if someone does go through with the transfer, not knowing that it will impact their eligibility, what should they do? Is there any way to undo the transfer and restore the individual's Medicaid eligibility? So if, well, first of all, if they can wait the five years, it's not an issue. But if they can't, um, there's something called a cure. So let's say uh, you transferred your house to your children, and then two years later you have a stroke and you need to go to a nursing home and you need to, to get Medicaid coverage to pay for the nursing home care. Your children can, can transfer the house back to you. And so then Medicaid treats that as if the transfer had never occurred, and the remaining three years of that look-back period uh, don't affect you. So you're, you're not in any better position than if you um, hadn't made the transfer, but you're also not in any worse position for having done that. So a cure is, is available. One final question. What is the difference between tenants in common and joint tenants with rights of survivorship? The two phrases show up in your article. So uh, there's a distinction of what happens when an owner dies. So if, uh, if two, and this is for any property, uh, whether, whether it has anything to do with Medicaid or not. So if you own property as tenants in common and one owner dies, then the property passes according to that person's estate. So if they have a will, it's to whoever they've named in their will. If they don't have a will, which is called a dying intestate, then uh, the, the state basically has a will for you and it says who receives the property, basically your, your closest blood relatives and your spouse. But if it's in joint names, then it passes to the surviving joint owner. So if two brothers own a house, um, there's a big difference between whether they own it as uh, tenants in common or as joint, because when one brother dies and they own it as tenants in common, then the house passes um, to their heirs. But if they own it as joint, it passes to the surviving owner. And this, has, this relates back to the estate recovery question as well, because the... Um, the states differ, but some states only seek a state recovery against your probate estate. So that's what passes under your will. But they don't seek recovery against your non-probate property, um, property that passes automatically or by beneficiary designation or in trust. So if you're in one of those states, in, the ha in Massachusetts, where I practice, is one of those states. So in Massachusetts, if the house is in the tenancy in common, and the um, owner dies, then the um, then, then it passes then it's subject to a state recovery because it goes through probate. But if it's in joint names and the owner dies, it passes to the other owner, 
and it's not subject to any Medicaid estate recovery claim. Is there anything else that people should know before we wrap up? Well, before we go, why don't I, why don't I say a few words about some of the exceptions to transfer penalties? Because the because uh, those are important. So for most transfers, as we said, you, you make a transfer and you, you basically started this five-year waiting period or look-back period before you can get Medicaid. But there's some really important exceptions. And the most important, the most applicable one is there's no, there's no penalty period if you transfer your house or any other asset to your spouse. So, um, so that's often very important. So when there's a couple and one of them um, needs nursing home care, it's often very important to put the house in the other spouse's name. So the, it gives them control. It allows them to do what they need to do with it. If they need to move or sell it or mortgage it to get uh, money to live on, they're able to do that. And then they can also do some estate planning in case they were to ha uh, happen to pass away first. So that's the, 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 the number one and biggest exception. There's also exceptions for transfers to uh, to um, individuals, children or non-children, there's kind of different rules for each, who are disabled. So if you have a child who's disabled or you have another family member, somebody else who's disabled, um, and under the age of 65, you can also make transfers either to them or into trust for their benefit. And again, the rules, the rules are a little different depending on whether they're um, your child or not. Another important exception, exception which is designed to incentivize and uh, compensate family members who care for each other um, is what's called the caretaker child exception. So if your child has lived with you for at least two years before you move to a nursing home and apply for Medicaid, and you can show that during those two years they provided you with care that helped you move, to, uh, helped you stay out of the nursing home for those two years, then you can also transfer the transfer the house to them without any penalty. So that that exception only applies to the house and only applies in this kind of very limited circumstances. And sometimes people, um, it kind of doesn't work out for them because we've had situations where well, it's not the child who's taking care of them, but it's their their son-in-law or their daughter-in-law, and they don't qualify for the exception. So so from my point of view, it's a little too narrowly uh, written. And then there's a one final. <laughs> exception, which is uh, much more rare. But the example I gave explaining uh, the difference between joint tenancy and tenancy in common, I talked about um, two brothers who own this house together. But there's also a, a transfer penalty exception for a, um, a sibling who is already a co-owner of the house and has lived there for at least a year before you go to a nursing home. There you don't have to show that they provide you any, with any care um, but it's a, I don't know how that got into the law. Maybe some congressman had this situation in their family. Um, but every once in a while it comes into play that you have um, some elderly sisters, brothers who are living together and one needs to go to a nursing home and we can protect the house by uh, putting in the name of the other one.